Okay. All right, what we're watching is the fifth game between 120, the current best undead player in the world, versus Lin, the current best orc player in the world. And they're going head to head. The 2-2 score is what we're at. And the purpose of watching this is to see if we can pick up any tricks from watching Lin, which is the orc here in the top right. And to see if we can learn better what 120 is all about. I'm noting once again that the pattern of his build layout and um, you know the positioning of his buildings, the the order is the same. Wait, what is this? He built his graveyard one too low. He can now not do a full wall off. It was supposed to be here. This is why he cut this tree. He made a mistake. It is now possible for Orc to do direct acolyte harass. Now. I could be wrong, and this could be because he actually does not want to link his cigarettes together. Because Orc could use Goblin Sappers to kill the double cigarettes together. But that is a mid to late game thing that does happen from time to time. But I wonder if he would really account for that. Okay. We're going to have the Triple Ghoul opening into Graveyard. He gets the World of Necromancy. Does not expend money on Dust of Appearance. Not that early anyway. And I think that's a good thing. I've been buying Dust early against the Orc at, when I play Undead. Oh look, he used an Acolyte to kill the Creep. It makes his DK be able to summon Skeletons faster. And he's going to go for a camp. This is consistent with what he did on Echo Isles at the beginning of the stream when I analyzed that replay. Another cool thing he did is he used Acolyte to pull these three Creeps into this creep which aggros them indefinitely and has three of these rogues hit uh lint units vastly increasing the amount of damage his uh, units are taking very nice little move and definitely something i should look out for when i play against 120. can you show the resource chart again okay sure i don't use it but if you like it sure hello wow he doesn't have dust but he will get this grunt Excellent start for 120. He also got two of the creeps here. So, um, yeah, same. Uh, definitely something I need to look out for when I play 120 on Amazonia. Uh, note also that he did not link his cigarettes here, which would lead to a sapper blow up of double cigarette and tumor relics at the same time as well. Is he gonna bring ghouls? I want to know whether he likes to do such things. He doesn't. He will just take whatever free damage he can and does not sacrifice his resource income, the future lumber he's gonna be getting. Okay. Kirby, when are you playing? I have been playing. The reason I'm not is because I couldn't find game for more than five minutes. So I went to watch a replay, which will help me in the upcoming tournament potentially. So he keeps doing fast solo DK creeping, which uh, I kind of like as an opener. It seems to put him on pretty even footing with Orc. He basically plays undead like Orc. Fast hero. Uh, fast creeping. Oh, nicely done by Orc and pity for 120. He is going to get this grunt though. He is not going to get this grunt though. <coughs> he is? No, he's not. Oh my god, but that costed a lot of healing salves. And now he's got to mess around with this one skeleton. Very awkward. Uh, Really liking 120's opening here still. Okay, so let's take a look at the food. We have uh, Holes of the Dead finishing. 25 out of 40 food. That's because his Acolyte died. Otherwise he'll be 26. And then he would not be able to build Lich immediately. If he had only double Zig. But he has triple Zig. So it's completely a moot point. Now if you remember on Echo Isles. He went three Crypt Fiends into Lich. Then into Black Citadel which is the tier 3 upgrade, and only then Slaughterhouse. And it looks like he's maintaining the same order, whether or not he has enough money to start it that way. He has less money this game, probably because he bought more Rots of Necromancy and he sold fewer items. 
Lin's still harassing. Triple circlet gives him insane trading. And that was a steal by 120. Very nicely done. Lich into tier 3. So the same pattern. It's safe to assume that if I watch any number of more 120 games, the build order will be the same every time. If you find something that you feel so fundamentally comfortable with to make a close game every time, win or lose, as Undead versus Orc, it is very common to keep the same formula. Okay, so he gets a small camp here. He consolidates his forces and makes sure that the Lich is next to the DK. He still waits for a long time at three crit fiends, and I think it's still three. Where's his third? Wait, he's only at two? Okay, I would have to rewind and see if he actually cancelled, because I don't think he lost the crypt fiend. So he actually cancelled the third fiend to be able to afford Lich and Black Citadel faster. So crypt fiends are a healthy creeping tool for him. You don't want to do that with ghouls, because they scale really poorly into the late game against the orc. It doesn't really matter to him whether he has two or three. Most important for him is his timings, his Lich, and his tier three. I expect Lin to hit this Kripfian out of Windwalk to make use of the end of his Windwalk twice. One Windwalk, one hit, and then switch target to the other if that's what he wants to do. Or he will just steal the troll if his Windwalk doesn't run out, which it looks like by the way it won't. So. Steals the creep. I want to learn the conditions of... Um... <laughs> nice try. I want to learn the conditions of uh, 120's decision-making process. I understand that he has good micro, and I now know his build order. Everything else now is about decision-making. I need to know that in order to be able to go up against him and other Chinese undeads who may be using him as an influential example to be inspired by, as he is the trendsetter of Undead vs. Orc right now. TC with Spirit Lodge is an interesting choice. I would say that if 120 gets information about that, which due to a replay bug, I don't know right now what he knows because I didn't pay attention to it. Oh yeah, that's the problem with this build. That opening that I mentioned. He gets tier 3 though fairly early. He can also uh, kind of juke and jive with his Acolyte. Blade Master, of course, can kill more as long as he's got enough mana. He may even be so greedy to attack before he has full mana. Either way, DK is going to get level 3 here. Lich will be level 2. And he will lose a few Acolytes here and there. He lost 2, lost a bit of mining time. And yeah, he has seen the Spirit Lodge, which means he'll be prompting Obsidian Statue upgrade this time. Where he would, wouldn't do that before. Because now he's not going up against Tier 2 Mass Grunts Raider Kodo. But he's also going up against Walkers. So you do need those Destroyers. He doesn't have Orb of Corruption yet, so I expect him to send back DK to get it and start another camp. Nice skeleton scouting, actually a really big deal. Look at this. He does not start creeping because of uh, the skeleton scouting. That makes a world of difference, and it, it's a big difference between one player and the other. Okay, I expect him to uh, stop making units now. No more Crypt Fiend, no more Destroyer. Just go to the middle, get Dark Ranger, and attack. Maybe he'll do another camp, or maybe he'll get the uh, Dark Ranger with the World of Skeletons and he just wants to do another camp. This is the part where I'm drawing a blank. I do not have... Yes, uh, my own precious. His cigarettes are placed to prevent Double Sapper blow up. Yeah, this is where I need to know about his judgment. So I wonder if he'll make an Abomination. I've seen him make Abombs before. Okay, not this soon, huh? Another Kripfian. I'm surprised. I wouldn't have guessed, as you can see. Guesses are very important when you're doing um, analysis of someone's decision-making process. If you're not making guesses, you're not using science. You're going to use confirmation bias or uh, retroactively change what you think you thought about something. So you need to always make a hypothesis and then see if it holds up. That's why it's important to watch replays slowly, to watch them full from the beginning to the end before you get all the way to the end and say, okay, I already know who won. I literally don't know who won here, right? 
I already know who won. So probably this thing that's happening here is because the duh, and this will lead to the win. But you're actually using the information about him winning to your advantage and thus to your disadvantage. It's it's not good to do it that way. Okay, sentry ward, bit of damage. He sees no lightning orb yet. And he sees the creep jack here. He can use a TP if he wants to, but he doesn't need to. He gets an item. I'm really liking 120's position here. He's got destroyer finished. Um, good hero levels, 3-3-1. Three, three, and he's going up against 3-3 three and three and no lightning orb yet. <clears throat> he's making a sacrificial pit, which can lead either to vision or a boneyard. Judging from his lumber, I'll say it's just for vision. He's got an acolyte ready. It's a 50 versus 50 food. Unfortunately for 120, no potential to actually eat that statue and also make it a destroyer. But one should be enough if controlled well. Now, why did he make Pit Lord, you may wonder, instead of Dark Ranger? Honestly, either would have worked, I think. I don't know why, actually. I felt that last game on uh, Echo Isles was more of a Pit Lord game, and this was more of a Dark Ranger game. But he did it the opposite. My lack of understanding here could potentially hurt me. I need to understand why, and so I, I should need to watch many more 120 replays to actually figure out the conditions of his various hero choices. If if I knew why he did that, that would be nice. So I expect him to send his acolytes to safety. Unfortunately, there's no space behind here. He can try to send some here, here, or just send them in opposite directions or go past here. But this blade, he doesn't have staff of telly. That does mean he's going to get his moment with Orc base for at least 20 seconds. So an, an attack here is both risky, but it's necessary. Because if he goes home now, he will never leave his base. No, I understand that Howl removes damage. And I know what Dark Ranger removes uh, spellcasting. I just I just don't know why here. Uh, Amio Rewani says he goes for Dark Ranger if he's against TC to silence him for no stomps. Yeah. <laughs> it was TC both games. That's why I thought he would go Dark Ranger here too. That's why we don't understand the conditions here. Okay, so 45 burrows are done, which means the priority will be take down the shop and then chase the orc army relentlessly. You can't do anything here at the 45 burrows. And let's see if he does that. Um, very nice acolyte count. He saved them well. He kills the shop and at, at this moment... Okay, and he has, he has a shade here. And I think he will just go back now. Walk back, not TP. No, he's going to attack. Yeah, it's so awkward to go back against... Uh, orc because they have so much mobility he will just speed scroll away so he's gonna kill the shop again and actually go straight for the burrows no he's gonna tp yeah see he can't get much done here and is that indecisiveness or waiting for the correct information painful good moves by lin uh, lin is still at 50 food having said that his money situation not too amazing he, he's only at 50 food yeah, he's having to remake his shop, and he's going to uh, actually get his final 50 food unit. Shade dies. And look at his hero levels. He's 3-3, three, three, one invul, one heal scroll. No speed scroll. And he's going up against 50 food with scroll of the beast invul as well. So 120 has contrived to stay on very equal footing despite all the damage he's been taking. I once heard Back to Warcraft guys say he chooses third hero randomly. Well, that sounds like a fun hypothesis, but I'm going to dis choose to discard it. It just means you don't understand yet. Uh, expansion for Orc here seems pretty impossible, which is a really good situation for Undead. I, I think when you look at 120's power level and decision making here, this map doesn't seem to be in Orc's favor. 120 seems very comfortable with how he has uh, manipulated the map so far. This camp is easier to take for Undead than uh, than Orc. So Anxiety says, probably Dark Ranger if opponent has no Dispel to get rid of Silence. And the Pitlord AoE debuff forces Walkers to use Dispel, which also gets rid of Spirit Link. In, which, in case your only Destroyer dies fast for whatever reason. That is an amazing hypothesis, Anxiety. And I think you could be right. I was thinking about the same thing as well. 
That's uh, that could be it. But then, how of terror is a very compelling reason to disenchant your own army. But isn't silence as well? Not as compelling, I suppose, because you can counter silence with invulnerability potion to get uh, two very good stomps in. Can be worth it, even though it's 150 gold. Can be worth it. Okay. He. Uh, okay. Okay. One one upgrades. This is another very interesting 120 thing. He gets one attack, one armor, and then another attack. Doesn't do like uh, low upgrades nor only attack. It is uh, relevant. It makes his army more survivable, and it combines nicely with How of Terror doesn't like this speed scrolling gauge he's uh he already got the big one didn't he did he get the rock on him six yeah and he will save his statue but the kodo eats a cryptian now that's kind of a blessing in disguise because he gets vision from that even though it's of course a unit loss i expect him to buy tp and posture for the second granite golem does he do that does he do that though? He does not. He uses shade to actually check. Ooh, that was kind of nice. <sighs> what races are you worst slash best against now? I think back in the day you were best versus undead and worst versus me, but I could be wrong. <coughs> Such a bro. Thanks, Hoan. You're spoiling me tonight. I uh, I feel shy. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my best races. My best matchups, uh, yeah, my best was Orc versus Undead. And I think my second best was Orc Mirror, then Orc Night Elf, and then Orc Human. I would say Orc Human's usually been my worst. There were periods where I was playing it really well, but over the course of most of my career, I would say Orc Human is the one I struggled with the most, and Orc Undead the most comfortable, with uh, Mirror and Elf alternating between second and third place. Okay, uh, goes over food. Now, I've seen him make abominations before against Lin, but he doesn't think it's the right conditions yet. Of course, he's going up against double Kodo. Funny thing is, he's making statue to go to 56 food and a Crypt Fiend. But once this uh, Crypt Fiend gets eaten, he'll be back to 53. He's on upkeep with just 53 food. But he wants to fight over this. He does not want to give this away. Uh, Blade and TC are still level 3.5. Blade will get level 4 from this. Undead engages. Interesting moment here. I'm gonna watch this very slowly. Okay, he gets stomped. Awful position for Lin. Does get level 4 blade. And he gets what? See, this is kind of OP about uh, Chinese Warcraft. Because I don't know what the item is until he picks it up. Okay, this is agility and intelligence. Not what he was hoping for. Not the position he's hoping for. And he got slammed. So what do we got? Heal scroll, double potion, invil. We have a zero upgraded army for Lin. He's at 60 food and he's caught in a bad position. He's still making a burrow. He's got a lot of bank. So he's in a very suboptimal fighting shape. I would say this fight goes to 120. But let's see, Cotton. I come back to you now, at the turn of the tide. Okay. That's a raider kill. Coil it! Coil it! <coughs> okay, I wonder if he actually intentionally waited to coil it. To get a heal solve on it first. Just to waste another 33 gold. If that's the case, man, so much respect. Very good micro here too by uh, 120. He devoured away the Raider Spirit Link before hitting it. Two one upgrades. Stop this upgrade. Another statue. This is fourth. Uh, can he coil can he afford to coil the destroyer? He chooses to do so. Another stomp is gonna come in. Can you move yourself a little bit more to the right? I can't, but I can do this. 
Uh, all the focus fire on this head center uses a Nova to finish him off. You see that he's clasping his throat. I've never seen that before. Crit oh, scroll the beast. Let's look at mana. He removes scroll the beast and howl of terror from his own units, but thereby, of course, also removing spirit link. He's got. He does another link to relink them, but now he's only got one dispel left. It should go here. Remove Scroll of the Beast and kill all those skeletons. Look at how much meat shield there is. Four skeletons in a fight like this. Goes for the head hunter. Ah, oh, that has so much here. Such good micro. War Stump is going to be great, but there's not enough damage follow up, is there? Blade has already dropped too low, so is TC. This is going to be a very easy 120 victory, I think. Healing Potion, yes. How of Terror removes all the damages. Look at that, TC minus one. He's supposed to have plus two and Kodo plus seven or something. How of Terror removes all that. Bro saving units as well. Even if he doesn't use them the rest of the fight, that's still denied experience, which means TC doesn't get level four yet. Orc starting to do better. He's got a Crypt Fiend eaten. Hero is difficult to stay alive though. Fight wise, no, Orc is not doing better. Wow, nice destroyer pullback. He knows it's pointless to even try to go for the Pit Lord. 59 food, 120, 49 Orc. This game is over. Scary, undead. Now, how do you even begin to counter that? Well, you gotta counter his creeper out first. I don't think Orc got ahead from the creep route, and in the follow-up, they both... Honestly, 120 really plays like an Orc. Every part of his strat was the same as Lin. Tier 2 at the same time, Tier 3 at the same time. Creeping with level 1 hero at the same time. It's, it's quite different. It's not been like that. There isn't even enough creeps on this map to justify Shadowhunter 3rd either. Power of Terror is so good, so survivable. If there's one thing I would say, <clears throat> it's that probably Spirit Walkers doesn't work against Undead. You should probably just not make Spirit Walkers. It's just too easy to counter with Destroyers. Your window of fighting is too short. You rely too much on fighting inside the Undead base because if you just wait, your units are going to grow obsolete. One of my good friends messages me on Google Hangouts and he says, Do you know that 120 used to be an orc? Until Vifaza taught him undead. Oh, there you go! Oh, there you go! I did not know that, but it makes complete sense now. And that will help him to understand Orc as well. Ready to ride. Nice. Okay, so yeah, I think you cannot make walkers against Undead. Ready to ride. Their, their unit counter against it is too good. This is GG. We just had a revelation and everyone only talks about the fact that I use Google Hangouts. <laughs> Who cares, dude? We had a game revelation and we talk about that. Lich list. Wow. So many destroyers. Still two on upgrades, by the way. Our forces are under attack. Nice. Nice. Yes, sir. What do you want? Yes. Hmm? 
I wouldn't say that was that good actually for me. <laughs> he killed a grunt, a peon. I lost a lot of mining time. It was funny though. <laughs> 